Hello and welcome to my presentation on the Black Donnellys. The early life. The Donnellys immigrated from Ireland in the 1840s. There was only three at the time, James Sr., Joanna, and James Jr., but the family would eventually grow to nine in total. The family quickly built their home, squatting like most immigrants in Lucan at that time. A man named Patrick Farrell bought the land the Donnellys were living on from the absentee landlord. During the settlement, James felt that he deserved the land from the hard work his family put into the land. A judge split the land in two, angering both parties. During a clearing party of the land, a fight broke out between James and Patrick. It ended with James killing Patrick with a hand spike. William Donnelly got married to Nora Kennedy, which angered her brother John. John would later go on to have future problems with the Donnellys. The Donnellys opened a stagecoach business that would also spark anger between a family, the Flanagans. They also owned and operated a stagecoach business. The rivals would eventually get in a race where an accident caused a driver for the Flanagans to die. James Carroll was a leader of the anti-Donnelly people and eventually would be appointed constable of the town. He was determined to rid the town of the Donnellys. During this time, Father John Connolly moved to the town and was greeted by anti-Donnelly members. Because of this, he would preach to the town during his sermon about the evil Donnellys. The father would go on to create the Peace Society, which both James Carroll and John Kennedy were a part of. It was February 4th at midnight when the mob surrounded the house, then got in silently, got the family into the kitchen, and that's when the rest of the mob jumped the Donnellys. They killed four of the family members in the house, then the mob would burn down the house before leaving. The mob moved quickly from the Donnelly house to where William Donnelly lived. The mob would knock on the door and yell for William. John Donnelly, William's brother, would answer the door and inevitably be shot by the mob. The mob think they got William, so they left. The first trial was against James Carroll. James would produce an ironclad alibi bringing forth witnesses that agreed with James, allowing the judge to release him on parole. The second trial held James and five others as participants of the murder. A young boy named Johnny O'Connor and William Donnelly testified against the six men. However, Johnny, only being 11, made the jury think that he can't hold the life of six men in his hands. William's testimony was also not taken seriously, as they believed he was trying to just get back at James. Unfortunately, the six men were not found guilty. Michael Boyd is a former Toronto detective who looked in the case. He used current investigation tactics to see if he could find out who the real suspects and guilty men were. James Carroll, he was known to hate the Donnellys, he was the leader of the anti-Donnelly movement and the Peace Society. He could have been related to the man James Sr. killed, Patrick Farrell. He was seen by both Johnny and William during the mob and actually leading it. John Kennedy, angered by the marriage of William Donnelly and Nora, had many interactions with the Donnellys that were unpleasant. He was also named by William during the trial. To sum up the parts of this essay, I wrote about the tragedy that the Donnelly families faced and how they were blamed for nearly every wrongdoing in the community, to the point where an angered constable and brother-in-law decided that enough was enough and gathered a mob to brutally murder five of the Donnelly family members, answering once and for all who was the culprit behind the legendary killing.